tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who know they're chosen now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee all the way on. So, good morning and welcome on this Lord's Day. It is good to have you with us. As we gather in worship, we do have a few announcements. As always, a reminder to read your FYI and bring that home with you, as there are things to remember throughout the week. A few an announcements for this week. First, during our services this weekend, we are welcoming new members. Um, so this morning, we welcome Mark and Katie Delgado. And then at the 11, we welcome Ben, Rachel, and Amelia Winston, and Nancy Toth. Um, and so we're thankful to have six new members joining our congregation this weekend. Yeah. All right. Uh, following the 11 o'clock service today, we are baking communion bread in the parish hall. Um, so far, we only have just a couple people that are able to stick around and help, and so if we could get a few more people to help, that would be wonderful. Um, there's no experience necessary, um, and we'll be there just for a couple hours after church. Um, also, coming up this week, I will be away on vacation uh, Tuesday through Monday of uh, this coming week. Um, and so during that time, Pastor Eric Trazo from Moorestown um, will be available for emergencies, and his phone number is available in the FYI. Um, and I will return to the office next Tuesday. Uh, Roseanne is back, and so she will be in the office starting tomorrow, and we'll have regular office hours throughout the week. Um, it's also that time of year that we are collecting items for our youth yard sale. You're invited to bring those in and place them on the stage in the parish hall anytime between now and Friday, May 3rd. Uh, and then our yard sale will be on Saturday, May 4th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Right. Uh, and that concludes our announcements. And so now I invite you to please stand for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. 
as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. done omniscient all knowing he counts not their sum thrown into a sea without bottom or shore our sins they are many his mercy is more what patience would wait as we constantly Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. All right. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. All right. So today... Um, we are going to start by playing a quick game of charades, okay? So the way charades works is one person acts things out, and the other people have to guess um, what, what the answer is. Um, kind of like Pictionary, but through acting. Yeah, all right, good. Good, we need more people, so that's excellent. <laughs> all right, so are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, so... Yep, adults can play too. Yep, what was that? Or what was the first one? 
someone, yep, loving, there we go. All right, so all of those together, hug, you know, comforting someone when they're crying, blowing a kiss, um, all kinds of other ways too, um, are ways that we can show God's love, right? Um, the ways of loving one another. And that's what um, the, uh, our, one of our readings today, our reading from, I believe it's 1 John, yep, 1 John, um, tells us is that um, as people of God, we're called to love one another. Um, and I know we talked about that, um, we talk about that here quite a bit, right? Um, but one of uh, the famous quotes that I really like um, it, some people say it's from St. Francis of Assisi, who's um, a guy that lived a long time ago and was important within the church. Um, but some people, you know, say it maybe wasn't him. Uh, they say it is, preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. So preach the gospel just means show God's love, okay? And when necessary, use words. So in all our actions and in everything we do, we're invited to show God's love. Um, and sometimes we do that by talking to one another. But just like we saw in charades, we can show God's love without even using words, right? Um, and so in all our actions and everything we do, um, we can be signs of God's love, knowing that God loves us and God loves everyone around us. Um, and so it's important for us to show God's love. Um, so with that, we're going to say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for your love that you have given to us. We ask that you always help us to share your love with our actions and with our words. Help us to be signs of your love for everyone we meet. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. The first reading is from the fourth chapter of Acts. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life. Let us say Psalm 23 responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, He leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. The second reading is from the third chapter of 1 John. We know love by this that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, 
but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please pray with me. God of love and life, you are the source of all comfort, hope, and grace. Grant that we might follow your Son, our Good Shepherd. Help us to recognize his voice above all the noise of our lives and give us courage to follow where he leads. Guide and strengthen our new members, Mark and Katie Delgado, Ben, Rachel, and Amelia, Winston, and Nancy Toth, as they continue their journey of faith as new members in this congregation. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. My husband is a bad shepherd. During college, he spent a summer as the naturalist at a Lutheran camp. His job was to take care of the animals, to teach the kids about them, and support the other staff as needed. Now, don't ask me why this camp thought that hiring a city kid from Camden would be a good idea for taking care of farm animals. But in all reality, he did a fairly good job, except when it came to the sheep. He was fine with the goats and the chickens, the cows, the miniature horse, and the cats. And even though he's allergic to hay, things went pretty smoothly. Except for the sheep. There were two sheep on that farm, and they were siblings. But one day, early on in the summer, one of the young campers said, look, a mommy sheep and a baby sheep. 
And it was only then that Mason realized that one of the two sheep was significantly smaller than the other, even though they were the same age. For some reason, it wasn't eating or gaining weight properly. So it was time to take the sheep to the vet. After chasing the sheep around for a while and getting it into the cage, he drove the sheep into town, and the vet said that it had too much acid in its stomach. Eating was painful, so it just didn't eat. And that's why it wasn't growing. Of course, there was a solution. Mason returned to camp with the sheep and with a list of special instructions on how to take care of it. The instructions required providing a special kind of hay that was only for that sheep. So all the other animals needed to be kept away. And then twice a day, Mason had to give the sheep a shot of antacid and feed it plain yogurt from a wooden spoon. You see, you can't use a metal spoon because the sheep would try to eat it. So it always had to be a wooden spoon. Now, on the face of it, that doesn't sound so bad. All told, it's a fairly simple solution to the problem. Just feed the sheep some yogurt, give it some antacid, and everything will be great. Of course, as we all know, it's never that easy. The problem is that sheep, as they always are, they were, it was uncooperative. You see, you think the sheep would want to live, that it might actually realize eventually that Mason was just trying to help. But that's not how the summer went. Every day, twice a day, one, one staff member had to catch the sheep. They usually cornered it in the pen, tackle it. One staff member found the best way to hold the sheep down was to sit on it. And then Mason would give the sheep its shot, and still holding the sheep, would feed it the plain yogurt from a wooden spoon. If the other staff member didn't hold the sheep well at any point during this process, the sheep would run away. And even though the sheep liked the yogurt, it would still run away. So every day, twice a day, it went exactly like that. The sheep always ran. It never cooperated cooperated, and it never learned that Mason was just trying to help. Mason did everything in his power to save this sheep from malnutrition, and he did. The sheep lived through the summer. But Mason is a bad shepherd. The sheep hated him. And to this very day, Mason hates that sheep. <laughs> My husband is a bad shepherd. But in today's reading, we get a very different image of a shepherd. Jesus calls himself the good shepherd, the one who five times in eight verses says that he lays down his life for the sheep. The difference here is the great love that God has for God's sheep. Unlike the hired hand, God has a deep love for each and every one of us. Mason hated that sheep, and that made him a bad shepherd. But God loves all of God's sheep. No matter what they do, no matter what happens, God loves them. And so in the Bible, we don't hear about sheep as being dirty or dumb or irritating, even though everyone in biblical times knew that's exactly what sheep were. They were an important part of the economy, and they were used in ritual sacrifices, but everyone hearing this story in the original context would have already known that sheep were not likable animals. So that the Bible gives us a new perspective on sheep. No matter how dirty or irritating or dumb the sheep might be, God loves them. God doesn't just tolerate the sheep. God doesn't do just the bare minimum to make sure that they survive. God loves the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd, the one who lays down his life for the sheep. And of course, we are the sheep. Maybe sometimes we follow Jesus like we're supposed to, but quite often we find ourselves like that sheep with acid reflux, or like any sheep for that matter. We're uncooperative, we run away from God, 
the good shepherd who is just trying to take care of us and love us. We turn away from the community that seeks to support us. We would rather follow the crowd of misguided and lost sheep than follow God's guidance into unknown pastures and into a life that could involve taking some risks. We are the sheep and God is our shepherd. But not only that, this passage also foreshadows what is to come for Jesus' ministry. Jesus speaks of the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep, who has the power also to take it up again. He lays down his life willingly. No one forces him to lay it down. And he knows that this is the duty of the good shepherd. So just two chapters later, when we begin the passion narrative with Jesus entering Jerusalem, less than a week before his death and resurrection, that is where we see Jesus actually laying down his life for all of God's people. So this story of the good shepherd is the story of God's relationship with humanity through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. The story of the Good Shepherd shows us a God who cares for us and loves us and guides us through everything in this life. And it shows us that God in Christ dies for our sake so that we might live. This story of the Good Shepherd is the story of Jesus, the one who lays down his life, the one who journeys all the way to the cross for our sake, this story of the Good Shepherd is about God loving us so much that God gives us life through the death of his only beloved son. And this story of the Good Shepherd is a story about our God who proclaims victory over death, who brings resurrection and new life for the one who laid down his life for us. And most importantly, this story is about God, the Good Shepherd, who protects and watches over us through all the joys and sorrows of our lives. This is the story of God, the Good Shepherd, who loves us and cares for us. The story is of God, the Good Shepherd, who gathers us, who searches for us when we are lost. And this story is about God, the Good Shepherd, who gives us life and who gives it abundantly to all people, all people in all the earth, and who gathers us into one flock, the flock of God's own children, with one Lord and one Savior. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.
this time, I invite the congregation to be seated and um, our new members as well as our council president to join me. I present Mark and Katie Delgado, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism and become members of this community of faith. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these siblings in Christ whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. You can head back to your seat. Um, I asked you to... Oh, I said you can head back to your seat if you want. Oh, okay. Yes, thank you. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. And do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. I invite the congregation to please stand and join in our conf confession of faith. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do, and I ask for God's help to guide me. All right, and you can face the congregation. People of God, do you promise to support Mark and all our new members and pray for them in their life of Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. All right, and I invite you to join me. You're welcome to kneel there. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Mark the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. You're invited to stand. Let us rejoice with Mark and all our sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Please sit or kneel as able.
shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. God of grace. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems or illness, especially Dave, Bill, Roger, Carl, Pat, Grace, Mary, Dennis, Roberta, Donna, Marlene, Stephen, Brenda, Nancy, Marge, Linda, Vera, Michelle, Joan, Julia, Marie, Marilyn, and Gretchen, and those we now name either silently or aloud. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace. Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith, especially John Augustino. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. 
Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. You may be seated. Communion this morning is celebrated at the rail. Both sides are invited to come forward at the same time, receiving the bread in your hand and using an empty cup from the tray to have wine poured from the chalice. There are also pre-poured cups of grape juice available in the tray and gluten-free wafers available by request during the distribution. For those that prefer to remain in their pew for safety or mobility reasons, or those worshiping on the live stream, I will lead you in communion following the distribution. Please know all are welcome.
Jesus, King of glory, that pursues me with his love and haunts me with each cheering of his softly spoken words. My conscience a reminder of forgiveness that Now, for those receiving communion in the pew or worshiping on the live stream, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. And now the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. And now may the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. 
Amen. Now go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.